Hello guys, how are you doing today? It's Tai I know here again and I'm currently on the beach in Lagos, Nigeria. And I didn't come here to chill, I came here to share a story with you guys. We are going to be meeting the CEO of Landmark Beach, which is the biggest beachfront in Lagos, Nigeria. I think it's the biggest beachfront in Nigeria currently. And then he's going to be sharing his story about building this beach and building this whole establishment that is currently behind me. So let's go meet up with him. Yeah, hello man. Good morning. Hi Tyler. How, How are you? How are you doing? Very, very nice to you. meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Say hi to my, <laughs> to my hi. viewers. How are you? <laughs> Here's Mr. Paul, who is the CEO of Landmark, and they are the owners of this establishment, the beachfront. The, you guys have so many things here. We call it, we call it a mixed-use environment. Mixed-use so environment. Live, work and play. Oh, yeah. okay. Awesome. So are you ready to share your story with us about Absol how you built? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. okay, let's go. <laughs> I'll start from the very beginning. Um, okay. So I was, I was born. Um, in London, um, in, in London, England. And at the age of 10, because my father was a diplomat, he wanted us to understand Nigeria. So I was sent to boarding school in really? Ijani King, yes, in Federal Government College, Lagos, at the age of 10. So initially, obviously, my brother and I, we didn't like it, but after about two, three years, um, we really enjoyed the freedom, the, you know, people like us. And, um, you know, it was, it was good fun. So spent the five years, went back to the UK, did my A-levels, came back to Nigeria to do my jam, and went to the University of Nigeria, read architecture, got interested in buildings and property, finished architecture, went back to the UK again, did my sort of professional qualifications. But I decided that I liked the business end of property. I then went to work with an entrepreneur, a guy called Mark Dixon. And I tell you something, if anybody tells you entrepreneurs are made, they're not, they're born. Uh, okay. Because this guy was something else. Um, I got my appetite for business then. At some stage, I said to myself, you know what, I want to do my own thing. So in my early 30s, dusted down my CV and my business plan and tried to create this thing called Landmark. Um, so I did that in the UK, opened up offices in, in, in Spain, in Germany, in France, in Belgium. Over the next sort of four or five years, I realized the African property scene wasn't as developed as one would expect. So I thought, you know what, we need to play in the property market as well. So we got some land holdings. In 2007, you know, I took a helicopter across Lagos and looked for a place that had potential but hadn't yet been developed. And this is when I saw this area in, in Oniru. Um, oh, so you saw all of this from, from up there? I saw it from up there. It's a lot nicer from up there. Oh, it's nicer from up there. <laughs> At least then. Um, saw it all from up there. So we dusted out the business plan and we said, you know what, what does Africa really need? We needed to find a way to, to create something, um, you know, so there was a lot of crime at the time, there were infrastructure issues, there were resource issues. So we thought if you put everything in one place, then people wouldn't have to go anywhere. So hmm. that was the idea, is to create a business leisure and lifestyle destination. You know what they say, the opportunity of a lifetime can only hmm. be realized in the lifetime of that opportunity. Hmm. Yeah. So if you, if you wait too long, the same opportunity may be there, but it's not, it doesn't have the same um, makings of it. UK is where everybody wants to run to. Why did you come back here to build your business? Yeah, so, you know, no matter how successful you are in the UK, no matter how long you've lived there, I mean, I think, I, and I can say the same for anywhere outside Africa, uh, outside Africa, is you never really have that proper sense of identity. You always feel you're in a foreign land, in a foreign place. It's almost like leaving your house and visiting a friend and deciding to, to sleep there. You're never as comfortable True. in your friend's house as you are in yours. The second reason was um, because I did my secondary school here, a lot of my friends my, were, were here, right? And, and and we're coming back as well. So I, I felt I had better relationships and better contacts and, and a better platform um, to, to do something more satisfying and more gratifying. And for anybody out there, I tell you something, the most gratifying thing in the world, no matter how successful you are, right, is looking people in the eyes and changing people's lives, um, but people you can relate to and people that you know. It's a mixed use tower. So on the downstairs, there's retail, then there are offices, there's a hotel and there's residential and there's a leisure deck as you can see. So that was trying to prove our philosophy in one building. So after that, uh, we built the proper event center. Then we built an extension to it. Then we built the retail boulevard, what we call our retail boulevard. And in that, it houses medical facilities, houses an educational facility, shops, restaurants, bars, offices. Even CNN are in there. Um, so this place is just framework. an ecosystem. And so when you come here, you don't need to leave. That's the idea, you don't need to leave. And by the time we finish, um, really in front of where we're standing, we're about to build um, 
a residential tower and, and a hotel. Most times when people see stuff like this in Africa, they usually feel it's like some white guy that is behind it. Europe and America are not, uh, they're not easier than Africa, by the way. They have their own challenges. They're just very different challenges. And we, you know, we had some very strong challenges. So one of the things I, I made up my mind when, when coming to Africa, I said I wanted to create a business in Africa for Africans, run by Africans. Wow. Right? And that's what we do. We, we don't have any foreigners working for us. Everybody's African. Talking about challenges, what are some of the challenges you have? Oh Just, God, <laughs> it's a lot. If I could change one thing in Nigeria to be that environment, that enabling environment, I'll create the handshake between the public sector and the private sector because, you know, um, the leverage a public sector can give the private sector to grow businesses, you know, in geometric proportions is immense and they have to do very little things. You know, from registering a company in the UK, it takes you seven minutes. Here it could take you seven months. Um, it's a little bit better now, but it's still taking a long time. And someone tells you you have to go to Abuja. Why do you have to go, go to somewhere Abuja, so to do something, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? The biggest challenge we faced here is before we put a stone in the ground, we had probably spent 20% of the money that we've used to develop this whole space. We wow. probably spent 30% of the time as well. It took us three years to put the stone in the ground because it took us two and a half years to get the first planning consent. Then you have infrastructure issues. So there are no roads, there's no water, there's no electricity. Can you imagine everybody has lights inside their house and there are no lights on the streets? Everybody has water in their house and there's no running water in the streets. The next issue is, is human resources. One in every two young people you meet are in a hurry. Right? Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you require patience to build businesses. You require patience to do a good job. And you, you should always wait your turn. Yeah. So, like, how many people do you have hired, like, working on the landmark? All right, so we have different levels and structures. Um, but so in, in what I would call my um, core team, yes, I think there are about 80 people. 80 um, people? Yeah, and yeah. that's not everybody? No, that's not everybody. No, <laughs> no, they're probably about four, five hundred. Um, five hundred people? In the, in, the, in the support services as well, right? Wow. Not, not, five hundred people not working. <laughs> and, and there are probably about two to three thousand people across the ecosystem. All the, all the businesses generate. So there are 59 wow. business, businesses in this ecosystem. 59 businesses? 59 businesses. Wow. I see myself, I say to people, look, uh, I see myself as a global citizen, right? Okay. But um, I'm Nigerian to the core. Um, and Nigerian for the, for the simple reason that I believe in Nigeria. And I don't describe myself as I'm from the west or the east yeah. or the north. Um, I've been around the country. Most of my friends are from everywhere in, in Nigeria. There's this phrase people say, um, Africa is the future. Yeah. What, what's your thought on Africa? Do without, you believe Africa is the future? Oh, without a shadow of doubt. If you look at everything, just look at how the cards are, are stacked. Look at the demographics. It has more young people than anywhere else. Yes, maybe with the exception of the Far East. Um, look at the strength and the rigor and the hard work and the ethic of Africans. Yeah, so when, you know, you see some of the bad stories, but when you see the good stories, the number of Africans that are prepared to work hard, they're intelligent, they're smart, they're creative and they're aspirational. So you have that. Then you have land. I mean, you just have so much opportunity. I mean, you could sell sand or sell water and do well here. Yeah. You wouldn't do the same if you're in Western Germany, right? So, so there's a lot of opportunity here, but you have to be creative and you have to have desire um, and if, if you asked me what's the number one thing that creates su success, um, it's just pure desire. Um, that's the number one thing. And after that, other things fall in. But if you don't have desire, then you run away from challenges. In Africa, there are many challenges. There are a lot of young people who are out there watching this kind of thing now, okay. who probably are amazed by what you have built and who probably want to build something like this in the future. Yeah. What's your advice to them, generally? So, first, patience. Okay. Right? Um, so you have to be patient. Um, research, research your idea, think about it. If you, th if you thought about it, someone has done it before. So look at what they've done, right? So you, you don't have to make their mistakes. You can make your own mistakes, right? Um, the second is resilience. Um, don't give up. Um, you're going to meet a lot of challenges. Just be creative and resolve to be resilient, right? The third is passion. And you must have passion for what you do. Don't do something because you think it makes money. Do it because you like it, you enjoy it, and you want to change people's lives. Every single business, right, that's built on changing people's lives has been successful. So if you focus on something that, that changes people's lives and you're passionate about, you will do very well. Right? And then lastly is, is success is a journey, it's not, it's not necessarily a destination. Tell yourself that you will do things the right way. 
Um, you'll always do it the right way, no matter what the pressures are. Try to be honest. Um, it's uh, you know it's difficult. You know we're all human, and, and and you know so I say this with a lot of caution. But but I think you know honesty is something that you can't trade. So um, try to be honest all the time. Try to treat people the way you expect to be treated. Um, and when you are successful, try to make sure that all the people around you are successful too. Um, because you know what they say, um, if you focus on making other people successful, you will be successful. Um, and lastly, I have a saying on my wall in my office and it says that if you want something you've never had, you've got to be prepared to do something you've never done. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks a lot for sharing your story with us. This was an amazing interview and I'm sure a lot of people out there actually learned a lot from this. So guys, I'm going to link the pages of Landmark Africa in the description below so you guys can come here and come and experience some of what he has built this place is really really amazing you guys should check it out and uh, that's all i have for you guys today if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in the next one peace